sensitive to criticisms and perfectionistic, it can be fair to say that INFJs aren't exactly keen on being told when and where they went wrong. It's fair to say that nobody particularly enjoys being corrected in their actions, however, INFJs have a few unique reasons as to why they have a problem with it, especially because they're usually quite open to outer opinions. Welcome, or welcome back psychos! Today's video is all about why the INFJ hates being corrected. Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Number 1. The One Size Fits All Corrections The INFJ personality type can easily see multiple angles of every situation. Yes, they have their own opinions, but they rarely judge others for the opinions they hold because they understand that not everyone has had the same experiences and lessons in life. Even when they strongly disagree with someone, the INFJ always tries to understand why the person thinks the way they do rather than automatically resorting to explaining why they think they're wrong. So, when someone attempts to correct an INFJ for their beliefs, they can't help but to question how they can't see this factor. When the person correcting an INFJ hasn't taken the time to see the other side of the story, or the root to their understanding, it can really irk this empathetic type. And still, an INFJ will try to consider their opinion rather than start a discussion. Number 2. When philosophical understandings aren't taken into account one interesting thing about the INFJ is that they're considered to be both feelers and logical thinkers. So, rather than relying heavily on either their dream world or their rational way of thinking, INFJs are able to combine the two in their decision-making process. However, some people don't have this so-called yin and yang way of thinking. Some personality types actually can't fathom using intuitive feelings and philosophical beliefs as means of guidance through life. While others use creativity as their basis, lacking the more sensible role that allows them to bring their creative thoughts into fruition. And so, when the INFJ is being corrected on their rather theoretical or metaphysical viewpoints, they can't help but to think that some people are really missing out on the bigger picture. While they may take that opportunity to patiently enlighten the individual, most times they take note not to share their perceived woo-woo beliefs with that person again. Number 3. Jumping too quickly to conclusions Like we mentioned, INFJs are not only able to see things from multiple perspectives, but they actually use this mental trait to conclude their thoughts and feelings. They use observed experiences of others, pros and cons, and intuition to see how certain outcomes will come about, including each and every aspect of their belief system. And so, when someone comes to tell the INFJ that what they think or want to do in life is wrong through judgment rather than knowledge, it can have the INFJ questioning their relationship with that person altogether. For example, if an INFJ were to be thinking about moving abroad on their own, they would certainly consider their loved one's opinions on the matter. But if someone were to conclude that it's extremely irresponsible and shouldn't be done with no basis or reasoning, you can be sure the INFJ won't let them in any further on their decision. Not to mention, they'd probably use that negative opinion as fuel to quietly prove them wrong in the future. Number 4 hypocritical opinions. With laser vision into people's characters, INFJs can see right through hidden agendas and even buried insecurities. And so, when it comes to being corrected, they'll be able to see if in fact it's just a personal problem that an individual has, something that they're possibly avoiding facing in their own lives. Sometimes, people resort to nitpicking others' perceived flaws and shortcomings in avoidance of their own much larger problems and these larger issues rarely go unnoticed for the INFJ. Plus, being such a perfectionistic and at times self-critical type, the INFJ sees the true power in focusing on yourself rather than using your energy for criticizing others. And because of that, they rarely challenge the other person to do exactly that. Instead, 
they usually recognize the underlying hypocrisy of the correction or suggestion, have a little inner chuckle, and go on doing exactly what they were doing without skipping a beat. Number 5. They rather not be perceived as less than. Speaking of being self-critical, INFJs know firsthand not only the power in self-awareness, but also when the criticisms get the best of their mental well-being. As a matter of fact, as introspective the INFJ is known to be, they are still one of the main types that tend to struggle with feelings of not being adequate enough in certain aspects of life. And so, they're known for being one of the more sensitive types when it comes to criticisms from other people. Luckily, they're quite open to hearing other opinions because, if they are wrong, they're certainly willing to correct themselves. However, it all comes down to the delivery of information. INFJs despise being talked down to or perceived as inefficient because, no matter how much other people struggle, they would do whatever it takes to avoid making them feel less than. On the flip side, if their opinions and beliefs are taken into account and the criticisms are constructive rather than being felt like an order or the butt of the joke, INFJs will be seriously grateful for the respect and courage it took to correct them. Number 6. They have their own ways of doing things. Untraditional and constantly thinking outside of the box, INFJs usually end up finding easier or more time-efficient ways of doing things. With a fine mix of procrastination and perfectionism at the forefront of their work ethic, they're always thinking of ways to get things done at record speed, yet of the highest quality without cutting any corners. In some instances, this is favorable and admired. However, when it comes to traditional, rule-abiding environments, these qualities are not taken very lightly and can sometimes be perceived as rooted in a rebellious nature. Rebellious nature that needs to be corrected. And so, when an INFJ doesn't see the logic in maintaining the traditional ways of doing things and are encouraged to accept the fact that that's the way it's always been done, they can end up feeling super frustrated. An example of this would be counting the cash register every hour for documentation, even when there hasn't been any customers in the last two hours. Or having to attend mandatory weekly meetings when there's absolutely nothing new to discuss. When efficiency and logic aren't a part of the correction, INFJs will probably check out. Number 7. They can't rationalize being corrected on pointless matters. Mindlessly maintaining tradition is one pointless matter that INFJs can't quite wrap their heads around. However, at least there's some type of reasoning behind it. Yet, when it comes to things like correcting people on a minor misuse of words when you knew exactly what they were trying to get across, they can't help but to think, seriously? Being so analytical, INFJs almost never miss an observation of other people's hiccups in language, punctuation, or embarrassing gestures, but they would never point it out. They're there for the bigger picture, the information that's contained within the minor human errors. And since they're also there to get the rapidly pooling information out of their own minds in the least confusing way possible, they're bound to make their own mistakes as well. Having these pointed out when it really doesn't help the situation in the slightest only makes the INFJ think of the other person as small-minded. Number 8. Unsolicited advice from someone with no experience. Everyone has something to say and advice to be given because in the end, us humans often think we're right. And because INFJs are known for being the advocates and the advice givers, some may say they have a good understanding of what is said to be good and bad advice. One thing that INFJs pride their advice giving skills on is that they don't give matter-of-fact suggestions for people to do with their lives. Instead, they strive to open their minds, creating new perspectives and possible aha moments for them to ride on. Another thing INFJs will always ensure is that the other person is confiding in them for advice rather than feeling chased down and judged by their empathetic guidance. This is because, as good of advice INFJs can give, they know in the back of their minds that they have no clue how that person is actually feeling in the situation, and it would be foolish to assume so. And so, 
If someone has a strong opinion about how an INFJ is managing a particular personal struggle without having been in the exact situation themselves, the INFJ can't take it seriously, especially if they didn't ask for their opinion in the first place. Well, psychos, that's it for today. So, as an INFJ, when's the last time you were corrected in one of these eight ways? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.